lies are moldering in the grave. While it weeps the sons of bondage whom he ventured all to save. But though he lost his life in struggling for the slave, his truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I'm Zach Lemhouse, the staff historian for the Culture and Heritage Museums of York County. And with me is Mr. Dan Nance, a Charlotte-based artist who we at the Culture and Heritage Museums have worked with before. Uh, right. We commissioned Dan to do a series of paintings that picked the events leading up to the Battle of Huck's Defeat mm -hmm. that are featured on our battlefield yep. trail. And we've recently worked with Dan again to commission a brand new painting for our newest exhibit, mm -hmm. Liberty and Resistance, Reconstruction in the African American Community at Brantonsville, 1865 to 1877. That exhibit is open now. This exhibit will tell the story of Reconstruction and tell the story of uh, African American militia captain and civil rights leader named Captain James Williams. On March 7th, 1871, Captain Williams was murdered by the Ku Klux because of his bravery and his activism. And we have worked with Dan to make a conjectural image of what we believe Captain James Williams and his militia would have looked like drilling in a field near Brattonsville. Well, with no further delay, Dan, will you help me with the honors? Let's do it. James Williams was born into slavery on the Lowry Plantation in York County in 1830, and by the eve of the American Civil War, he was enslaved on the Bratton Plantation. In 1865, he escapes from the Bratton Plantation and joins the Union Army. He serves for 18 months and returns in 1866. Now, it's unclear what role he played in the Union Army because in 1892, his wife, Rosa, her house is destroyed by fire, and any official discharge papers were unfortunately destroyed. But according to primary documents in Rosa's pension application, which she files in 1893, we know that when James Williams returned from service with the Union Army, he came home with the blue clothes on, which is why we have elected in this portrait to paint James Williams in his blue Union coat. Now, in 1893, Rosa does apply for a pension as the widow of a Union veteran. And as I said, her house was destroyed by fire the year prior. So she relied on numerous testimonies, depositions that attested to the fact that her husband had served. And thankfully, these depositions provide physical descriptions of what James Williams looked like, including his height, his weight, and his skin tone. Those depositions, in addition to an image of James Williams' grandson, Joseph Cephas Williams, were used by artist Dan Nance to create a conjectural image of what James Williams' face might have looked like. In 1869, James Williams enlisted in one of the state-established militias that was created by Governor Robert Kingston Scott. James Williams was eventually appointed captain of the militia near Brattonsville, near the home of John Simpson Bratton Jr called Forest Hall. This militia was known as the Forest Hall Militia. Now, there's no images of what the Forest Hall Militia looked like, but we used images of an 1866 African American Union League rally that occurred in York County to give artist Dan Nance an idea of what this militia might have looked like. We also used primary source documentation in the form of testimony from the great Ku Klux trials that were held in Columbia in 1871. During these trials, numerous people described what James Williams' Forest Hall militia looked like. The weapons that James Williams' militia were armed with play a vital role in the story of the night he was murdered. On March 7, 1871, the Ku Klux were gathering up weapons that had been issued to James Williams' militia by the governor of South Carolina. These weapons were Remington Rolling Lock transformed rifle muskets. 
Van Nance took pictures of an original Remington rolling block transformed rifle musket to make an exact duplicate in the painting. There is a reproduction of one in the exhibit at Brantonsville. Now, Dan, you have made a career of painting historic people and events. You've been doing that for a very long time now. What kind of process mm -hmm. do you go through when you make an image like this? It, it is a process. Uh, there are many steps to it, but uh, it, does, it all starts with a story. Someone coming to me and saying, hey, this is a story that needs to be told. Uh, so with something like this, it was a battlefield portraiture. He said, this is a, a person that we don't have any documentation of except for written accounts from primary sources. So I would go with uh, Zach here. I'd say, Zach, what, give me all the information you could on it from, from anything you find from documents with height, hair color, blah, 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 all those things to help round it out. And then I'll go into the sketching and drawing phase, look at something that, a uh, composition that uh, really is striking for that moment because I, it's all about capturing that, uh, that, that, that kind of pinnacle moment there. You're, you're immortalizing something, so you really want to try to get in the gesture and the composition that really frames him up nice, and he becomes the central part of that. Um, and so we also went into mood. We discussed uh, what, what kind of day. Time of day yeah. was a big thing for this because mm -hmm. the, the primary source accounts suggest that they typically mustered their militia Saturday evenings. Yeah, okay. So you did a great job. It was a great opportunity to create yes. that, and the lighting can be such a character. I try to make it a character in all my work, and you can see here I've highlighted that with having them kind of in a halo form there. You know, when you're on the field at night, and the light is cutting across just right. So it adds to the mood. And you can also see I tried to represent. Uh, uh, there's this kind of this the spirit of their independence now in this new phase and the new desires for a country to, to be more inclusive and on that path and you can see them he's a leader of men he's come home to lead his, his these people and you've also got to represent here another little subtle symbolic thing is the birds coming across it's almost this kind of taste of freedom kind of thing and Dan and I, we worked very closely together to get the firearms that they had mm. just right because that's such a big part of the story. It is. Because on the night that James Williams was murdered, the Ku Klux were actually going through the area confiscating these weapons. Mm. These weapons and the fact that these African American men were armed mm. was a big reason why he was murdered. So the, the weapons themselves play a role. They are a character in, in this in the beautiful story. painting yep. that you've done. Well, thank you, thank you. And that was also why we wanted to have him prominent here and here. Uh, because it's relevant to the story. So we did photos and I, you actually were good enough to bring out the one model that you had and, and you photographed it and I needed it in a certain way and you're like, okay, let's just take some photos of that. Dan, I can't thank you enough for all your hard work with this. Uh, a print of this will be hanging uh, in our orientation room at Historic Bradville. This original will be preserved uh, in our archives. But copies of this print are available for sale uh, in the Brownsville gift shop, mm -hmm. and an uh, image of this will be integrated into the text panels within this exhibit. Visitors will be able to enjoy it for a very long time to come. Very so good. thank you again, Dan. It's I, I, my can't, I really can't thank you enough. Thank my you pleasure. So it's been an honor. Thank you for working with me on this, and let me tell the story with you. Truth is